Oh, so hi, Katie here. Um, yeah, so did you all have a good Christmas? Did you all have a have a Merry Christmas in under lockdown? I know it wasn't easy for a lot of us, you know. Um, I had a really quiet Christmas. I I didn't do a lot. In fact, I hardly did anything apart from cook myself dinner Christmas Day. I, um, what else did I do? I haven't done anything. I literally haven't done anything. I went online and I bought some dresses and I bought, I bought a wig. <laughs> um, <laughs> I should have pretended it was my own hair, shouldn't I? But, um, yeah, so I haven't done much. Um, so what's, what's the news been then? I was momentarily distracted then. I thought there was some kind of spider in my room. Oh no, not a spider. Ah. <laughs> God, I've got such big hands. But yeah, I mean, so, um, I've been one week on my um, <clears throat> dose of um, Easter gel, my, my uh, increased dose of Easter gel. So I'm on um, three now rather than two pumps. So I don't know what is that, 2.75 meg or something, or 3 meg, I don't know. But um, yeah, because I think one pump is 75 meg, two pumps is 75 plus 75 is... I, I, do you know, I've got no idea. 75 is not 200, is it? So it must be 2 points... 2 point something, 2.50 meg, 2.5 meg, so yeah, so I'm quite pleased with that, so obviously haven't seen any changes yet because it's only a week, but um, yeah, so um, and what did I want to discuss today? I don't think I can remember what I wanted to discuss, um, maybe... <clears throat> anything to discuss. Uh, well, um, I've got nothing to discuss at all. Um, so, so what's your favourite transgender related film? Um, so I have to say my favourite trans film is Boy Meets Girl, the one with um, Michelle Hendley in. So, because there was a television series, um, on British television shortly afterwards, um, but it was a completely different story and everything. And it was actually starring a trans woman, Rebecca Root, as well. She's a brilliant actress. Um, but um, yeah, Boy Meets Girl, I would recommend that, you know, that film. I mean, and I'd recommend the series as well, but the series has nothing to do with the film, it's just the same title. And it's just starring a trans woman as well. So, um, yeah, so it's a really good film. Um, there's, let's see, what have I seen? I've seen Trans America. Um, so obviously they use a cis actress for that. It's still a good film, though, you know. It's still a good film. I mean, obviously, like, yeah, I'm not saying trans people are better actors than cis people, but, I mean, <laughs> I just think, um, I always think it's nice, you know, if you can have, like, a trans person in a trans role, it makes a lot of difference sometimes. And, um, like, one of the things I liked about Boy Meets Girl is it is kind of, like, there was so much in there I could relate to, you know? I mean, like, even, like, little things that people who are not trans wouldn't notice. Um, I kind of thought, oh, yeah, you know, that's so that's so true, you know? So I had a little chuckle as well, because it's quite a light-hearted film. It's got, like, a, partly a serious message as well. And um, I'm just really sad that they never made a sequel. Because I think, you know, if ever a film kind of <clears throat> invited a sequel, it was that one, you know, um, without giving too much of the plot away. So, um, yeah, so I've seen Trans America. Um, Felicity Huffman is in that, so that's good. That's quite a sort of maybe a little more serious, I don't know, maybe a little more tragedy in that. I don't know, really. I think, you know, there's tragedy in both of them, so that's a good film. Boys, Boys Don't Cry with Hilary Swank, that's another one. Um, uh, La, Vie, La Vie en Rose, that's a good film. Um, I mean, the, the last three films, only the first one I mentioned actually stars a trans woman. 
Um, but um, they're good films as well, you know. Um, La Vie en Rose is about a transgender child. It's a French film, I believe, or maybe a Belgian film. But um, it's a French language film anyway. And um, yeah, it's about this um, child who comes out as trans to, to her parents and um, how people's reactions are towards her. Um, it was made in 2003. So maybe the um, things have changed a bit now um, in terms of awareness. Um, there's a lot more kind of support networks for trans children and their parents now, but back then there wasn't, you know, and there wasn't many support networks for any trans person, whatever our ages anyway, but particularly children, there wasn't much for children then and uh, young people. So yeah, so that, that's a good film. Um, and also, let me think what other films I've seen. Oh, I saw a really interesting film um, recently. It was on Netflix called um, Alice Junior. Now, that's actually a trans woman starring in that. It's a Brazilian film. And um, it, it's, um, it's about this um, teenage trans girl who has to relocate. Um, you know, her father has to relocate to another part of Brazil. And... Um, they're not so kind of familiar with trans people in that part of Brazil and so she gets a rough time at school but it's also a comedy as well and it's about how she wins everybody over in, in, in the class you know and it's nice it's a really nice film you know and it's, it's kind of like I did shed a few tears as well because um, there are serious bits there but um, yeah it's a comedy film and, and it's, it's really kind of like you have like it's like one of those films that give you a feel-good factor at the end of it. A bit like Boy Meets Girl, it's kind of like it's got that feel-good factor. Um, because a lot of films about trans people are based on... Um, there's a lot of kind of um, tragedy there. Uh, particularly like films that were made, say, a couple of decades ago. Um, you know, there's always like a tragic kind of story and a lot of the time it's a real story like... Um, there's a film called A Soldier's Story um, by, um, I think it's like an American TV, you know, made for TV movie, but it's, it's very good. It's about Calpurnia Adams and um, she, a, a, a Marine who's sort of based at, it's a true story, and, and a Marine who's based at her town where she lives, um, they both fall in love with each other and start going out with each other and um, that's, you know, that's a good film. Um, again, it's quite sad um, without a lot we might know about Calpurnia Adams anyway and, and um, you know, what happened. But um, yeah, that's, that's a good film to watch. Um, obviously The Danish Girl as well, that's a good film. Um, films with trans people in them. Uh, Tangerine is a good film. That's a really good film as well. That's trans people in that. Um, it's kind of, um, I had it's ages ago since I saw it. From what I can remember, it's quite funny, but again, there's also like a lot of sadness in there as well. Um, there's, I've seen Christine, this Christine Jorgensen story. Um, that was maybe probably the first film about trans people that was actually made, um, you know, in kind of like for a mainstream in really common audience. Um, that is, yeah, that's, it's kind of like, it was, I think, feel it was well-intentioned. I mean, Christine Jorgensen actually worked as an advisor on the film and it was based on the biography that she, she'd sort of written. Um, the autobiography she'd written, and um, that was her autobiography, I believe, um, 1967 maybe, and the film came out in 1970. So, I mean, yeah, I mean, it was kind of well-intentioned, but a lot of it now is maybe a little bit offensive, and, you know, particularly the way, <clears throat> not so much the actual film itself perhaps, but the way it was actually um, advertised and sold and promoted to people. I mean, a lot of the advertising around um, the Christine Jorgensen story, um, the film, it was it's um, quite offensive. I mean, some of the old movie posters will say, um, "Oh, you know, kind of," they are kind of like other trans people and make Christine Jorgensen, you know, make it sound like Christine Jorgensen is, 
was strange, you know, and kind of like, you know, they were kind of sensationalized stuff and like as if almost like they're talking about the circus sideshow um, act and yeah, and sadly, I mean, that was the attitude back then. I think it still is the attitude with some people, you know, um, which um, we're trying to change. Um, it was quite difficult in the UK with the media who kind of still has that mindset about trans people. Um, but um, yeah, so anyway, kind of back to topic. Um, Christine Jorgensen's story is, um, yeah, I mean, I would recommend it. I, I think it's quite funny, though, the way she, she goes to Copenhagen, um, you know, and goes in there, you know, sort of like looking like a gender normative male. And um, the next thing you know, the next shot, she wakes up in bed and she's got that kind of blonde hair and obviously very feminine. I mean, again, played by a, a trans, not not played by a trans a actor. Um, uh, but, um, yeah, I mean, it, I think it was nice to have Christine Jorgensen involved in the project, but, um, you know, I mean, the way, I mean, if you look at the old newsreels of Christine Jorgensen, like on, on the video kind of documentary that I attempted that probably wasn't very good and probably didn't do her justice, but um, you kind of look, there are some old movie kind of um, movies of Christine Jorgensen when she was in Copenhagen and she looks, you know, like any other um, young woman, really. Um, so, um, but in the film, she's actually a guy definitely looks like a guy, you know, typical kind of 1950s gender normative male. And the next thing you know, she wakes up in bed and she's got like kind of like shoulder length blonde hair and she's kind of, you know, um, like as if, you know, by magic, a couple of hours. But unfortunately, I mean, as we know, it doesn't work that way. You know, if somebody has a magic wand, it might. But no, we have to, transition takes many, many years. And I mean, in Christine's case, um, she was on hormones uh, first. And she was, I believe, the first trans woman that we know of to actually transition via hormones. Um, and also surgery later. So, um, yeah. So, I mean, by that stage, at the stage that she had a surgery, um, she was looking fairly, um, you know, to all intents and purposes, like any other young woman. Um, but yeah, so yeah, what else, what other films do I know? What other trans films? I'm trying to think hard now, but I'm sure there are a lot that I know of and I've seen. I mean, there's Hedwig and the Angry Inch. I believe that's about a trans woman. Um, there's, um, I mentioned Tangerine, um, you know, I should have made notes before I started talking about, um, trans people in films, um, because I've totally, I mean, there's a Dallas Buyers Club, I mean, that's a good film. Again, a trans actress doesn't play us, but, um, the trans actress doesn't play the trans woman. Uh, but it's a good film anyway, and that's based on a true story. Um, I, yeah, you know, I can't think of it. Oh, there's one about um, the Australian entertainer Carlotta. That's a good film. Again, not a trans actress, but that's a good film. And um, Carlotta is still um, around today, and she's a big star in, um, in um, Australia. Um, but that, this is about Carlotta when she was young in the, in the 60s and how she sort of became famous as a, as a nightclub performer and, and um, celebrity. So um, there's that. And yeah, so I can't think of anything else. I genuinely cannot think of anything else. <laughs> I'm sure I'll think of some later on. I've mentioned the Danish girl again not a trans actress. I mean, it was Eddie Redmayne. I mean, it was a good film, but you would like to see more trans actors and actresses in, in these roles. Um, it's, it's happening slowly, but I mean, every time they have a cis person in the trans role, you know, a lot of people in the trans community will kind of say, um, oh, hang on, I'm, you know, can we have like trans people playing trans people that, you know, so, I mean, I, <coughs> oh God, 
should have brought my water with me. I didn't bring my water with me. But <clears throat> yeah, I mean, I don't think you have to be trans to play a trans role. I mean, maybe that's a bit controversial of me to say that. But um, in the past, it was the case that no trans person was ever put in the trans role. I mean, a classic example is the film Dog Day Afternoon, which is about a man who robs a bank to um, pay for his partner's um, gender reassignment operation or gender confirmation surgery. And um, originally, um, the woman who the story was based upon um, she didn't look anything like the cis male actor who played her in the film. I mean, but they didn't want, in those days, again, it was like the early 70s, they didn't want a trans woman who actually looked feminine. They wanted a trans woman who looked like a man, so I guess they wanted to push the, the, the myth that, you know, all trans, trans women are, <clears throat> are quite... Um, you know what, <clears throat> they wanted to push the propaganda that all trans women are not, <clears throat> you know, don't sort of conform to, um, you know, feminine standards of beauty. I don't know, I don't know, I don't know a better way to put it, you know, without kind of, <clears throat> you know, I don't know a better way of intelligently putting it. Um, it's probably, that's probably my a comment on my limitations really but yeah so um yeah so yeah Danish girl was good um I mean as I said I don't think that you have to be trans to play a trans role as I think the danger is if we always insist each time you have to be trans to play in a trans role then um people are going to turn around and say oh well a trans actress can't play a cisgender role, you know. So, for instance, if I wanted to play, um, I don't know, Ophelia from Hamlet, you know, then um, they would say, "Oh no, Ophelia! Ophelia is not a trans woman in this in the play, so you can't play Ophelia from Hamlet." Although that said, how do we know that Ophelia is not a trans woman? Because she never, I mean, she's never kind of pregnant in Hamlet. You know, so she could very well be a trans woman. It's all open to interpretation, but I mean, I would want the right to play a pregnant woman in a film. You know, if I were a trans actress, I would want the right to do that if a role came up. Because the thing is, once you say it, like trans people can only play trans roles, then it kind of limits trans actors to, you know, trans roles, and and I think that's that's wrong. And um, I also think as well it is acting, so I mean, it's a controversial one, but a lot of it is the fact that for decades now they never had trans people in trans roles, you know, and that was completely wrong. And trans representation in Hollywood, if you've seen the documentary, it's a brilliant documentary, Disclosure, that's on Netflix as well. Um, go watch that. And um, that will tell you all about Hollywood's kind of history with trans people and the way that trans people are represented on screen. And, um, and at one time, we know that um, people like Christine Jorgensen, I mean, Christine Jorgensen specifically, she was actually banned from being on television because she was trans. So, which is a real pity, really, because I was watching... Um, I sometimes I watch old kind of um, on YouTube. I watch old sort of um, <clears throat> videos people have posted of the the quiz show. Uh, What's my line? And I was like thinking to myself the other day. I thought she Christine Jorgensen would have been brilliant on that. She would have really, really. I mean, I wouldn't be surprised if she ended up hosting the show because she was absolutely she was so witty and funny. And um, but no, no trans women on television. You know, in the sort of 50s and 60s, which is quite ironic really because Christine Jorgensen actually got, um, soon, you know, as soon as she came back from Denmark after her um, gender confirmation surgery, um, she was offered a film contract, a Hollywood contract, which, which she turned down. Um, but um, I would have loved to, you know, <laughs> it was like, I mean, if it had been me, I would have taken it, but not that I'm be any good, but, <laughs> you know. <laughs> I mean, I then everything just went, you know, 
people just started turning against trans people then. And I think what it was at the beginning, they didn't know how to react to her, you know, because it was the first time that a trans, you know, they, they'd sort of come across somebody like her. You know, I mean, I doubt very much whether many people in America had heard of um, um, Lily Alb, for instance. Um, so, um, yeah, I mean, they didn't know how to react to her. And she even kind of won Woman of the Year award. I think it was 1954, 1955 couple of years after she returned to America and um, you know when she was in magazines and stuff and then uh, you know you know everything completely changed then you know as soon as more trans people started coming forward um, you know all of a sudden you know the mainstream sort of society culture became much more transphobic um, and it was to do with the Cold War as well um, there's a really good video on YouTube actually in which somebody explains that why the media turned against Christine Jorgensen when they were kind of relatively for the eight for that age sympathetic um, to her um, at the beginning to start off with so yeah but um, yeah so I've ended talking up I've ended talking about <coughs> ended up <laughs> God I'm hopeless I am so hopeless. Am I not hopeless? Please, please let me know in the feedback. Am I hopeless <laughs> or not? I don't mind. You know, if you've got any tips about the way I present, please, please do tell me. You know, I tend to look down a lot, so I'm trying to look at the camera now. You know, I'm trying to actually look at the camera. So yeah, so I'm kind of thinking like I'm looking at the person, so the person is the camera. So yeah. Uh, anyway, well. I, I love you all. Thank you very much for watching. Um, I do appreciate you if you've sort of, um, if you're still watching, you know, and you've listened to me rambling on. Um, that's, you know, thank you very much for hearing me out. And um, please do let, let me know what you think in the, the feedback below um, in the comments. Uh, I, yeah, I might make another video before New Year, but I might not. So it's December the 30th now, so I just like to wish everybody a, a happy New Year, and I hope you have, you enjoy celebrating New Year's Eve, you know, and I mean, I hope this next year coming now is a lot better than the the last one, um, than this one. <laughs> So it's been the weirdest of years, you know, and I mean, it's been kind of emotionally and mentally difficult for me, and I'm sure it's been emotionally and mentally difficult for you as well, you know. I mean, it's it's been very difficult. I felt never felt so isolated and estranged from the trans community in my life and from my friends in Cardiff. Um, I have got some friends in Newport, and we did like at one occasion we did we did go to the pub, you know, and meet. You know which was nice um but then kind of lockdown started again so um yeah and i met um i had a friend i had a couple of friends over for dinner as well um so until lockdown started up again and then yeah but yeah yeah <laughs> so i hope you all enjoy new year's eve and um i wish you all a very happy new year so um I will say au revoir for now and um, I love you all. Bye.